All right, what's up everybody? It's your boy student Dr. Malachi Wright. And in today's video, I wanted to take some time to talk about uh, my application cycle and specify what schools I applied to, what schools I got interviews to, and what schools I got into, and specifically uh, the process behind applying to dental school. I've had a lot of pre-dental students reach out to me and inquire about what the process is like, when they should be writing their personal statements, and different things in that nature. So like the timeline of the overall application. And I wanted to give you all a couple of pointers to help you out if you plan on applying uh, this cycle or the cycle after the next or any time in the future. So please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and check out all the other videos I have on my channel. I post videos of dental related content in regards to uh, day to day in my life, different vlog videos, advice on how to get into dental school, and then I'll show you all the real, the real deal behind aspects of dental school, specifically at my school, University of Maryland, how we do things over here and exactly what I'm loving about the program and different things of that nature. So in this video, I wanted to start off by talking about the reason why I chose to apply to 10 schools. So I chose to apply to 10 schools. Of these 10 schools that I applied to, there were University of Maryland, Howard University, Meharry, Columbia University, University of Pennsylvania. I applied to University of New England. I applied to AT Steel, Missouri. I applied to a school in Chicago, Midwestern University. I applied to Nova University. And I also applied to one more school. I can't remember the name. I think it was AT Steel, but I feel like I already said that. So I applied to, I know I'm applying to 10 schools. I should have a list in front of me, but I don't. But I chose to apply to those 10 schools for multiple reasons. Number one, I was considering location and I was also considering cost of institution. I had a plan that didn't really pan out as well as I wanted it to, which is okay because I still met the school that I want to be at. But at the end of the day, like applying to schools that you can see yourself going to, number one. So starting out with reaching out to people who go to that school, finding out what the culture of the class is like and emphasizing exactly what you want to get out of dental school and if that school aligns with what you're looking for. So cost, location and campus culture or student body culture were big, crucial events or things that I wanted to look for in a dental school. I wanted to go to a dental school where I felt like I wasn't trying to compete with the person who was sitting next to me. Uh, more so we were all working together to collectively cultivate a society where we're all helping each other out and it's not so much like everyone is just sitting here competing because we're all trying to match it to a specific residency program or whatever it is which at university of maryland i will say we've been able to cultivate in a very short period of time obviously people there are very ambitious and everyone there you find that are more like you in many ways than anyone else you may encounter so it's extremely important to know or have that sense of self-awareness uh, and it can be difficult. You know, sometimes you may have imposter syndrome or whatever it may be, but your family or your, your colleagues, I call them family because that's what we are. They they show you that you're you're where you're supposed to be. And I believe that that was one of the biggest things I saw when I interviewed at University of Maryland and when I um, actually reached out to students who go to, the, to who go to the school and attending events like Impressions Days. If you haven't attended any Impressions Day, I will implore you to go on Google or whatever it is, look up University of Maryland Impressions Day or Tufts Impressions Day. I know they have an Impressions Day. I attended that one as well. And um, UPenn. UPenn also has a day. Uh, I don't know if it's Impressions Day, but I didn't go to that one. But I know they have something for, for, for pre, pre dead students. But reach out to the schools, see what the campus is like, see what the culture is like at the institution, and then weigh your decision on where you want to apply on that factor in addition to what other factors are important to you. So holistically, I ended up submitting my application completely around August the 15th or the 14th. Um, I was delayed because of the surgery that I had, but then also was a little delayed because I took my DAT late. Uh, due to the surgery, everything was pushed back. So I didn't end up taking my DAT until July to the 30th. And for those who are applying, that is a little late, but if you're confident in your application, for me, I, I had made sure that everything else was polished before I took my DAT. So that way, once I got my unofficial scores, I can just submit my unofficial scores, submit my applications, 
And then once I had those unofficial scores, I could then continue to make sure or wait until they were official and then upload those scores once they were completed. For those students, and I didn't find too much information on this when I was looking, but for those students who are thinking about applying to dental school and like say if you're still waiting to take your DAT and you're 100% sure that you're gonna apply this cycle regardless of what score you get on your DAT, you can submit your applications in early June or July just so that the school knows you plan on applying there. And then what I would do, I would reach out to the institution, let them know your plans. So send an email to the admissions office let them know your plans and then once you let them know your plans you can then study for your dat uh you put a little more pressure on yourself because you know that this is like not the end all be all but it's more at stake because you spend a lot of money on those applications and then study for the dat once you study for the dat submit those apps take the dat got a great score that's fantastic submit those scores and then your application won't take too long to be verified from that point and to that point, I honestly say it really comes down to your application holistically. So for me, like a lot of people were surprised. I got an interview from Columbia literally the week after my scores were verified. And I, I do believe that that was because, you know, I already applied or I already submitted my applications prior to. They weren't officially submitted because I didn't have my DAT score. But they can still see other aspects of my application before I submitted my DAT score. So. I'm quite sure that they liked other aspects of my application, but specifically they were waiting on my DAT score. The waiting game then began. I would definitely recommend keeping yourself busy, hanging out with your friends, taking some time to relax. If you're working, taking some time to work. I know for me, I was working as a teacher during that time, so my time was completely occupied. And I, in some, some cases, forgot that I even had uh, applications still in the portal because I was so busy. So make sure that you occupy your time very well to where you're not just looking at your your actual applications and checking your status every single day i will employ you to stay off the student doctor network there's a lot of stuff on there that is honestly complete foolishness some of the interview prep stuff is a little helpful but overall it's your holistic application that matters the most so at the end of the day you can look on there for stuff that you know people will say oh if you have a 20 on the dat you need to take it over again or if you're trying to get into a competitive program you're not going to be competitive enough if you don't have a 25 on that um, I'm, I'm living proof that that is 100% not true. I got into Columbia and I got into UPenn and I got into all the schools I applied to, um, two specifically Ivy League that are very competitive to get into. And my DAT score was not above a 21. And I had a solid GPA, I had a 3.9 GPA, but I didn't go to an Ivy League undergrad institution. I went to my state, state college um, and I actually had a lot of credits from community college as well. So that's another point. Multiple institutions that I applied to accept the community college credits. I think the only one who doesn't is Tufts and maybe USC. I can't remember, but I know Tufts didn't, so I didn't apply to their school. But uh, I know Columbia does, UPenn does, and you don't have to be perfect to get into these schools. You just have to know how to elucidate your story in a manner that's engaging and something that's also memorable. And that's extremely important. So during my timeline for the University of Maryland specifically, I got my interview or had my interview on October the 16th, which is super early. Uh, I got my secondary interviews or my, my secondary letters and secondaries are basically essays that you have to write for the school after you submit your first initial uh, application through the portal. And I did my secondaries fairly quickly. I think it took me about maybe two or three days. And then I uploaded those. And then shortly after, about maybe a week or two weeks later, I got my interview at University of Maryland. So in regards to this process, I will say that, you know, starting early is one of the most important things. I started writing my personal statement about maybe four or five months before my application was due. And I did that because I wanted to jot down a couple of things that I wanted to include and be as specific as possible when it came to the stories that I wanted to elucidate in my application. And specifically for the DAT or not the DAT, I'm sorry, for the personal statement specifically, you only have 5,200 characters, I believe. So it's a really short space and you have to be as intentional as possible. You want to make sure that that is not going to be an area that you're just focusing on what you wrote on your resume or your CV, but you want to have really specific instances where there was an incipitance of why you wanted to go into the dental field 
and how that is going to affect not only you, but the patients that your future that, that you'll be providing for in the future. And making that connection between exactly how you went from, you know, being exploring this field to actually becoming engaged in the field and then also what lessons you took through that engagement. So whether it be a mission trip, whether it be boots on the ground, that was my method going out to my community and actually passing out dental kits that I made um, and, you know, doing stuff like that, going to community service events. I'm currently about to go to a community service event on Saturday after work to pass out food for the homeless individuals in my community and different things of that nature. Show what you took from those experiences. So for me, I took integrity. For me, I took relationship building, communication skills, because a lot of people do not know how to engage with someone who may not have as much similarity as them. For a lot of us, we, we come from households where we've never experienced homelessness. We've never experienced or even been around people who may not have been in the same social economical or social socioeconomic class as us. So we don't know how to engage with somebody who who may may not be in the same socioeconomic class as us or someone who may not have the same experiences as us. And that's OK. But you have to know how to be uncomfortable in those positions where you may be a little or you, you have to know how to be comfortable in positions where you may be a little uncomfortable. And I think in engaging in that, you know how to treat everyone equitably, not equally, but equitably in a manner in which you're able to engage with them to make them feel welcome, to make them feel valued, to make them feel heard. And that only comes with practice. That's not something you can read from a book or learn from a YouTube video. So you actually have to go out there and you actually have to do it. And I think once you have those experiences and they don't specifically have to be dental related, but skills that you can take from those experiences that you can then translate over into dentistry and translate over into your passion for dentistry is what's going to be important for you to emphasize while you're going through writing your personal statement and even other secondary essays in your personal statement. When it comes to letters of recommendation, I personally got a committee letter from my school and I think that's one of probably one of the best things to do. And I say that because they organize everything for you. So if you're not a very organized person and you feel like you have a lot of stuff that you're juggling, get a committee letter from your school. And in a committee letter, all it is is multiple professors coming together to write one big letter for the institution. And then the institution itself is recommending you for their program, not just the professors individually. So if you have a recommendation coming from an institution, it's going to hold a little more prowess when it comes to the admission process, in my personal opinion, because the institution is one that is a large body. It's not just one specific professor or one specific person who's advocating for you, but it's a whole school that's advocating for you. And for certain schools, you can only upload two or three letters of recommendation. But if you have a community letter, you can upload up to five or six letters. And in these five or six letters, you wanna make sure that the individuals who you have who are writing these letters for you, you schedule some time to sit down and have a meeting with them. And in that meeting, you provide them with your CV, your resume, and also a list of things that you've done in their class or in the research or whatever it is that's related to that specific professor. So for me personally, I got a recommendation letter from my molecular biology professor in undergrad. And in her class, I talked about how I hosted sessions for students who were in the class at the same time that when I, in which I was taking it and how during those sessions, I helped students grasp concepts that were a little difficult and I reiterated the important topics that she elucidated in class to help them better understand ways to study. And in doing so, I was able to help a lot of students increase their scores, thus decreasing the dropout rate, which was pretty high for that course at my institution. And that was one of the things that my professor didn't know that I did until I had a meeting with her and I talked to her about it. And she, she remembered that instance. And in that moment, that was one of the things that she could talk about specifically in her letter of recommendation that I did to not only improve the lives of other students in the course, but to also help her out because if I'm answering a lot of questions that students have, they're not asking her questions or sending her email. So um, that was just one of the things that we laughed about. And I think that including aspects, specific aspects like that for each professor that you're getting recommendation letters from is extremely important and it makes a letter a little more personable and not just something that where they're writing letters for 5,000 students and they all sound generic. There's something that they can remember about you that is specific and that is tangible for the person who's reading it. That's extremely important.
So overall, I think that if you include all these aspects into your application, you'll be extremely successful. One of the last things that is extremely important is going to be your interview. And I believe that your interview will be smooth if you know a couple of things. Number one, be aware that you're going to be nervous whenever you interview. And if you know that you're going to be nervous, then it takes a little bit of the nerves off of you because you understand that, hey, I'm going to be nervous during this interview. And I understand that this is not probably going to reflect my best self. And if you go in with that expectation, then you tend to sometimes disprove yourself because we go in with the expectation that, you know, this might not be your best interview because you may be a little nervous. You find yourself to be a little more calm. <laughs> I don't know if that works for everyone, but it definitely worked for me. So when I came into my interview, I knew that they were extremely important and I knew and I prepared for them asking me questions on my application that I really knew inside and out. Honestly, you have to know every single crevice of your application because they'll ask you about something small on your application that, you know, you may have overlooked and that may end up taking half of your, your interview time. So make sure you know everything and you're able to explain everything in your application and the reasoning behind what you're why you're doing it and also be sure to know specific missions and the values that the school emphasizes so the school that you're applying to what is their what are their values what are what is their mission and how will you align to that mission that the school is offering and once you find yourself aligning to that mission that the school is offering it's going to be further and much more important to to elucidate specifically how you will contribute to that mission. And I think in discussing that and showing the individuals your experiences in which you've done something very similar is going to be extremely important. So for me, one of my missions or one of the missions at University of Maryland is fostering diversity. And one of the things that I've done continuously to foster diversity was my engagement up at Towson University, in my undergraduate institution and making sure that there was equitable resources for individuals who were on campus. So I hosted, I was president of the pre Society while I was at Towson and the president of Omicron Delta Kappa, which was an honor society there. And a lot of individuals who were in this program or wanted to be included, they weren't your traditional um, college student who lived in a dorm and who, you know, was 17 or not 17, sorry, 20, 18 years old or whatever it may be. There are a lot of students there who wanted to be involved too, but they have families. They may have been a little older. They may have been 30, 25 or whatever it may be. And they wanted to go into the field of dentistry. So I hosted convenient times for everyone to meet that could accommodate their schedule as well. Making that environment more diverse and having different perspectives from different people of different ages was one of the things that was extremely important for my cultivation um, in the field of dentistry and then just my personality in itself but then also ensuring that the people who are also a part of this organization can see different perspectives from different people. So overall, I hope you all found this video helpful. Again, I'm gonna be giving you all an update on how dental school has been going for me. Uh, right now it's, it's November and you know, it's going pretty well. Typically they say D1 year is one of the more difficult years and I'm definitely feeling it. Um, we're having a lot of exams and a lot of classes that you have to study for. So we're always on go. But we definitely still have time to enjoy our lives and take some time to take a little breather. This week, we don't have any exams. So this is the first week in probably two to three months that we don't have an exam, which is amazing. Um, but then still, things start to pick back up after a holiday break. So we're getting it. We're anticipating that. But overall, I've been having and really enjoying my time. Enjoy the moment, live in the present and just know the future will come before you know it. So I hope you all found this video helpful. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and let's continue to help this channel grow. I really appreciate all the supports, all the comments. If you all have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me and let me know. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.